Hello everyone, welcome to Lukman IS. As you know, we are discussing the previous year questions of UPSC preliminary examination. So today we are going to discuss about general science, which is uh, also known as science and technology in today's session. Okay. So let us see the topics that we are going to cover in today's discussion. We are going to cover biotechnology, then we are going to cover artificial intelligence, then we will look into the visible light communication. We are going to understand about blockchain technology and we will also understand about carbon nanotubes. Okay. So let us quickly discuss these topics one by one. Okay. So the first question is about pro nuclear transfer. Okay. What do we mean by pro nuclear transfer? We will discuss about it in detail. And before this, we need to understand that pro nuclear transfer technology is primarily utilized for the purpose of creating three parent babies. Okay, for the purpose of creating three parent babies. Okay, it is used for creating three parent babies. And this particular technology is used for prevention of mitochondrial diseases in offsprings. Okay, so answer D is correct for this question. Now let us quickly see the details about this particular technology. Okay, I'm going to discuss two methods by which we use pro nuclear technology. One of the methods I'm going to explain through this image and second method I'm going to uh, explain through this particular image. Okay, so let us understand like how you know embryos are made using pro nuclear technology. So what happens in this case, let's consider uh, this is mother and this is father of the, uh, you know, they are the intended couple, they want to have a baby. But the thing is, in case of mothers act the mitochondria is faulty. Okay, the mitochondria is faulty. So what we do over here, we, you know, we implant the sperm of the father into the egg of the mother's cell okay into the egg of the mother's cell and in this case what happens here like we have uh, this particular thing we have a zygote but at the same time what happens like you know this particular egg has faulty mitochondria so we take out the information genetic information from this particular egg means like we take out the nucleus from this egg and then you know we implant this particular you know uh, like nucleus the zygote into another healthy egg donor's egg but like from the donor's egg we take out the you know uh, genes like we take out the nucleus from the donor's egg okay and in place of the nucleus of the donor's egg we implant okay or we transfer the parents genes okay so this donor's egg has healthy mitochondria but the original mother's egg did not have healthy my, my, mitochondria so after this particular thing this zygote is created and this particular zygote is transferred into the you know uh, uh, tra transferred to the original mother okay so that's how we create the three parent babies now let us talk about the next you know image over here see in this case what happens this is the mother's egg in this mother's egg we have abnormal mitochondria means like we have faulty mitochondria okay but the you know gene of the mother like this nucleus of the mother is healthy so what we do we take out the healthy nucleus from the mother's egg and at the same time let's consider this is donor's egg okay this donor's egg has healthy mitochondria as well as healthy nucleus but like we take out the healthy nucleus from the donor's egg, we discard this particular nucleus. And after then, what we do, we transfer this particular mother's healthy nucleus into the donor's egg. Okay, this donor's egg had healthy mitochondria and like here, like we transfer healthy nucleus and this particular thing, this particular egg that is new egg in this egg, what we do, we transfer the sperm from the father using in vitro fertilization. Okay, and this embryo which is created after then is placed into the mother's uterus okay so that's how we create three parent baby so in case of three parent baby two basic technologies are you know are used these are one of the technology is known as assisted reproductive technology okay it is known as assisted reproductive technology it is known as assisted reproductive technology okay reproductive technology one of them is known as assisted reproductive technology which is also known as micro mitochondrial okay it is also known as mitochondrial okay 
replacement technology it is also known as mitochondrial replacement technology okay t e c h n o l o g y okay and the second thing is here three persons in vitro fertilization uh, fertilization happens okay so here we use in vitro fertilization okay in vitro fertilization means fertilizer uh, fertilization happens in a laboratory environment okay fertilization this is the thing okay so this is the thing now let us understand what is mitochondria or mitochondrion okay it is the ener energy generating powerhouse within the cell and mutations in mitochondrial dna can cause serious Ill uh, diseases also so here like we had you know abnormal mitochondria so if like you know the uh, fertilization happens inside this abnormal uh, you know inside this cell having abnormal mitochondria so there was a possibility of you know baby uh, being born with you know serious illness or serious diseases so that's why we use this particular technology which is known as pro nuclear transfer technology and using this technology we create three parent babies so answer for that question was d now let us move to the next question for the day okay this is the next question let us read this question with the present state of development artificial intelligence can effectively do which of the following okay so they are now asking about which of the following can be applications of artificial intelligence artificial intelligence in short can be written as ai okay so they say like bring uh, they can be used to bring down electricity consumption in industrial units yes they can be done it because like using artificial intelligence we can find out like what can be the you know demand of electricity in future so we do prediction of demand for electricity and after we have done prediction of demand for electricity what we do we simply go ahead with you know producing that much you know energy which is required and we distribute it effectively so we can bring down electricity consumption in industrial units using artificial intelligence this is one application if we talk about next application we can create meaningful short stories and songs using okay using uh, artificial intelligence and for this purpose there was a person his name is alan turing okay so alan turing has created okay has created first machine okay he has developed a machine to generate simple melodies in the year of 1951 itself okay and what he has used he has used the idea of long short term you know memory he has used the idea of long short term memory okay for creation of this particular thing and for this he has utilized the you know uh, speech data from okay he has utilized you know the data from interstellar and fifth uh, element okay these are the names of movies hollywood movies and for creating you know uh, like sun spring and it's no game these are two of the things that he has uh, you know uh, used to create uh, su sun spring and it's no game songs like that okay so second is also an application of artificial intelligence now if we talk about disease diagnosis as you know like disease is diagnosed by a health professional means disease is diagnosed by a doctor if you are ill you go to a doctor he diagnoses disease and then he you know recommends prescription or medicine for you but the disease diagnosis can also happen using artificial intelligence and like you know there has been researches conducted and the research has found that disease diagnosis using artificial intelligence was more accurate okay over a long term period okay although like we cannot deny the you know work that is being done by the health professionals they are the backbone in case of health sector but like both the things can be amalgamate, uh, amalgamated together they can be integrated so that we can come up with greater healthcare facilities for people okay so disease diagnosis is also a work that is done by artificial intelligence apart from this like you know text to speech conversion also happens using artificial intelligence how it happens because as you know language processing happens in google assistant and what does google assistant do it ut utilizes neural networks okay you it utilizes neural networks and it converts uh, and it utilizes the language command to create you know text to speech conversion or at the same time it can you know convert your speech into text like you you can speak something to google assistant it will convert it into text then it will search okay so this is possible and 
we can also utilize artificial intelligence in case of wireless transmission of electrical energy what do we mean by the fifth option it simply means let's consider in one hand we have a charger okay we have a charger on one hand and on the other hand we have a small mobile phone okay we have a mobile phone we want to charge this mobile phone but we do not want to use any cable for that purpose but the thing is this particular charger has to effectively you know locate the location of the mobile phone for locating the location of the mobile phone we use artificial intelligence okay so all of these can be the applications of artificial intelligence that's why answer is d in this particular question okay here answer is d this question was taken from set a of upsc prelims examination of 2020 all these questions are from set a okay now let us take this question which is the third question in series this question says with reference to the visible light communication technology which of the following statements are correct here they are using uh, they are asking about another technology which is known as visible light communication technology okay visible light communication technology statement one says vlc uses electromagnetic spectrum wavelengths 375 to 780 nanometer yes i have searched in uh, you know internet and i have found that like you know the wavelength of electromagnetic uh, wavelength in case of visible light communication technology ranges around this particular value itself okay it is not exact but like you know it ranges around 375 nanometer to 700 okay 780 nanometer okay so this is a right statement then second it says vlc is known as long range optical wireless communication okay this statement is not correct because like vlc can be used for short range optical wireless communication why because like in case of vlc we use fluorescent lamps okay Fluor, uh, flu, uh, fluorescent okay lamps and we use leds okay we use leds okay using this thing we transmit data data let's consider i have a study table and like on that study lamp uh, study table i have a study lamp and using that particular lamp i am transferring the data on my mobile phone so that is possible okay so it is used for short range optical wireless uh, communication let us see like which of uh, you know uh, if we eliminate option uh, you know statement two from the options which answer we arrive at so as you can say option a has two so option a can be eliminated option b also has two as an uh, uh, you know statement so it, it can be eliminated option d also has two it can be eliminated so we have directly approached the answer by just knowing that vlc is used for short range optical wireless communication this is one thing okay let us also discuss about you know statements third and fourth statement third says vlc can transmit large amount of data faster than bluetooth yes this is one of the property of vlc okay so using vlc we can transmit you know larger amount of data at a shorter time period so speed of you know data transfer in vlc is much higher as compared to bluetooth okay and apart from this you know vlc has also properties like it uses no electromagnetic interference okay no electric el el electromagnetic interference is there in case of uh, vlc vlc means visible light communication technology and uh, you know it is a low cost technology and it has high data rate okay so these are you know these are the like you know usage of visible light communication technology so the correct answer for this question is option c okay you can see a correct answer is option c now let us move to the next question for the day this question is about blockchain technology okay it is about blockchain technology so this question reads with reference to blockchain technology consider the following statements okay statement one says it is a public ledger that everyone can inspect but with no single user control yes this is the distinct gaishing feature or this is the unique feature of blockchain technology because like it is a public ledger that uses okay that uses peer to peer network it uses peer to peer networking okay peer to peer networking or network okay and here there is no central authority no one is there to control the you know blockchain technology so that's why this statement is correct okay 
like as you know like if you want to transfer some amount from your bank account to someone else's bank account this particular transaction is monitored by the npcil national payments corporation of india limited okay under the supervision of the reserve bank of india okay so there is a central authority with any kind of transaction that we are doing you know interbank or intra bank transactions but in this particular thing what happens no central authority monitors the thing okay every transaction is visible okay to to the public who are using this particular platform it is a peer to peer networking platform but there is no central authority okay the second statement says the structure and design of blockchain is such that all the data in it in it are about cryptocurrency only this statement is not correct because like it is limiting that it is about cryptocurrency only this is not correct because blockchain technology can be used for cryptocurrency and the similar uh, this three technology has been used okay has been used for you know creation of applications that can be utilized in health you know health sector as well it can be used for education purposes okay for education purposes it can be used in financial sector governance and diamond industry okay so that's why statement 2 is not correct if statement 2 is not correct let us eliminate some of the options so we can eliminate option b because it has uh, you know statement 2 we can eliminate option c it simply means that option 1 was correct okay now let us talk about third statement it says applications that depend on basic feature of blockchain can be developed without anybody's permission yes definitely it is a open source technology which means that everybody can use the blockchain technology okay for developing basic applications but at this point of time here in india you know the reserve bank of india has said like uh, has put a ban on on using of this particular technology but you can use you know uh, you can develop basic applications using basic features of blockchain technology okay so there is no restriction on that part and uh, at the same time like if we talk about indian patent act of 1970 the indian patent act also does not allow you know patent uh, patentability of a mathematical or business method or a computer program or algorithm so these things okay math uh, like you know computer program or algorithm as are, are not patentable in india so the applications can be developed without any you know uh, without any kind of permission okay so answer is d for this particular question okay answer is d for this question now let us move to the next question for the day this question is about carbon nanotubes okay this question is about carbon nanotubes so this question reads with reference to carbon nanotubes consider the following statements okay they can be used okay these are the applications of carbon nanotubes that are mentioned over here okay so the thing is uh, let us understand about carbon nanotubes then we will look into the uh, these statements okay so carbon nanotubes are you know allotropes of carbons and they are made up of graphite okay and they are cylindrical uh, in shape cylindrical tubes in shape okay so uh, their you know diameter is of the you know nanometer range okay if we talk about the properties of cnt's okay cnt's means carbon nanotubes if we talk about properties so carbon nanotubes are small in size they are small in size okay apart from this the carbon nanotubes are has light weight okay they are light in weight or or small mass okay they are light in weight and apart from this they are strong okay carbon nanotubes are strong okay they have high electrical they have high electrical and thermal conductivity they have high electrical and thermal conductivity okay apart from this carbon nanotubes have high surface area they have high surface area okay high surface area so these uh, this is the property of carbon nanotubes these are the properties so let us see the applications they can be used as carriers of drugs and antigens in human body yes there has been research and through researches people have you know actually uh, you know use the carbon nanotubes for sending the drugs and antigens in the human body okay 
they can be made into artificial blood capillaries for an injured part of the human body yes this can also be done they can be used in biochemical sensors yes this is also possible and carbon nanotubes are biodegradable in nature this is a very good property of carbon nanotubes so the thing is like once you discard the carbon nanotubes in the environment they are not going to create you know environmental pollution because they are biodegradable so all these statements are correct that means option d is the right answer okay so option d is the right answer so that's all that i had to discuss with you for the day thank you so much everyone for attending the session i hope you have a great day ahead thank you